Indonesia and the United States are building a new maritime training center. Importantly, it will be built at the strategic meeting point of the Malacca Strait and the South China Sea. The move seems to be designed to counter China's increasing aggression in the region. Construction has begun on the $3.5 million center on Indonesia's island of Batam, which is located at the southern entrance to the strategic straits of Malacca. The center is a collaborative effort between Bakamla, the Indonesian Maritime Security Agency, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Embassy International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs Office, and U.S. Naval Facilities Engineering Command. Reports state that it will be owned and operated by Bakamla with the assistance of the U.S. While the target completion date has not been announced, it's expected that the work will be done at a brisk pace. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the U.S. has got a new foothold in the South China Sea region. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. Indonesia considers the waters near its Natuna Islands within its exclusive economic zone EEZ. While China claims sovereignty over the waters, citing the so-called Nine Dash Line that's based on historical claims. In this regard, viewers may note that on July 12, 2016, judges at the Hague Tribunal completely rejected China's claims over the waters and stated that China's claim that it enjoyed historical rights over the South China Sea is incorrect. China had argued that the tribunal had no jurisdiction in the matter and rejected the decision. Chinese activities in the region have been getting more and more aggressive. In early June, it was revealed that Indonesia had been planning to expand its submarine fleet to 12 vessels from four in response to China's repeated incursions into disputed waters in the South China Sea. China has overlapping territorial claims for the disputed waters with not only Indonesia but several other Southeast Asian countries including the Philippines and Vietnam. China has militarized several islands in the area and has even deployed advanced missile systems like YJ-12 anti-ship missile as well as HQ-9 surface-to-air missiles. The Strait of Malacca is a narrow stretch of water, 580 miles or 930 kilometers in length between the Malay Peninsula, Peninsular Malaysia and the Indonesian island of Sumatra. As the main shipping channel between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, it's one of the most important shipping lanes in the world. According to the U.S. Energy Information Agency EIA, in 2016, approximately 16 million barrels of crude oil and 3.2 million barrels of liquefied natural gas LNG, were transported daily through the strait. This is the second largest volume in the world after the Strait of Hormuz connecting the Persian Gulf and the Indian Ocean. Attending the ceremony virtually, the U.S. Ambassador to Indonesia, Sung Kim, said the Maritime Center would be part of ongoing efforts between the two countries to bolster security in the region. He said, As a friend and partner to Indonesia, 
the United States remains committed to supporting Indonesia's important role in maintaining regional peace and security by fighting domestic and transnational crimes. As per reports, the facility will be home to classrooms, barracks, and a helicopter launch pad. Technically, the launch pads could be used to deploy maritime helicopters. While currently there is no mention of anything major, the strategic location makes it apt for surveillance and intelligence gathering. A high-end radar placed in the location could keep an eye on the area. China has objections to the presence of U.S. THAAD missile defense system in South Korea precisely for the same reason. According to the Washington Post, China's opposition has little to do with the missiles themselves and is more about the system's inbuilt advanced radar systems that could track China's actions. The ANTPY-2 ground-based radar GBR, which is part of that, is a long-range, very high-altitude system having a range of 2,900 miles or 4,700 kilometers. The building of the facility comes at a time when tensions have been rising in the South China Sea over the Chinese Communist regime's increasing aggression in the area. For example, since April, hundreds of Chinese vessels have been lingering around the disputed Spratly Islands amid repeated protests by the Philippines government. It's to be noted that a new Chinese law has come into effect recently, which allows the Chinese Coast Guard, or CCG, to use weapons against foreign ships that it sees as illegally entering its waters. With this law, China's Coast Guard could use water cannons, handcuffs, and tear gas, although the use of more lethal weapons is not explicitly ruled out. Notably, China has reorganized its Coast Guard in recent years. The CCG has been transformed into a military-like organization under the centralized command of the Chinese Communist Party, Central Committee, and Central Military Commission. This is similar to the People's Liberation Army PLA. Also, the U.S. Department of Defense report of 2020 indicates that China has more than doubled the number of large Coast Guard ships, over a thousand tons, from about 60 in 2010 to over 130. In this situation, a foothold in the South China Sea region is an excellent proposition and will go a long way in countering China.